Welcome, travelers. We're aware that your journey was difficult, but prepare to have your questions answered, for you have been granted an audience with the Masters of Moth. Music, 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 music. And welcome back to Masters of Modern. I am your host, Alex Kessler, here with my co-host, Ben Bateman. What's up, guys? What a weekend it was. Crazy, Triple right? Modern GP weekend. It's a big one, and there were some sick decks. Uh, it's like The top eight was, v- and we're going to actually talk about this today a little bit, uh, about diversity in the format, but purely diversity, regardless of maybe archetype, but diversity, crazy diverse. Um, and then especially if you go down to top 64, top 32, like insanely diverse. Some of the cooler decks, I mean, modern has definitely been shaken up over the last six months. A hundred percent. I mean, this looks nothing like the format we were talking about a half year ago. Oh yeah. Like, uh, I mean, so, so diversity is something you mentioned, right? Yeah. And you, and we, we do definitely want to have that conversation. So let's, uh, let's clear out of the way a couple quick shout outs. We'll be quick about them today because there's a lot to talk about. Make sure to follow us on, uh, Twitter? Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and Facebook, at the MMCast. That's where you can find us pretty much everywhere. We have uh, Alex sitting over here at... Cass Wiley. And I'm Ben Bateman Media. You can find me at Twitter and Instagram. Yep. Of course, the sister podcast, The Command Zone, Jimmy and Josh do awesome content. Find them on and, uh, uh YouTube for both of us. Yep. Uh, the Command Zone YouTube channel. And then we are uh, the Webisodes Network YouTube channel, I think, technically. Or Top Decking TV. It's changed. Something like it's that. It's weird. Uh, makes it hard for you guys to find, which is a bad thing. But okay. Uh, <laughs> moving on. And then, uh, of course, uh, DMTW Clothing. They are a lifestyle brand that are helping us do our products. Yeah, you we can buy a sick play mat right now. You can go to the store. I think it might be sold out. Oh, it might be sold out. Yeah, but oh, okay. I but go to dmtwclothing.com because if they have one or two left, um, I think I said that last week, but I actually think that that's like down to one or two, or maybe they're gone. Last okay. I checked, the stock was very low, so I have um, nothing to do with this. Yeah, so they're I'm, awesome. I'm in charge of the other thing you guys should all go check out, which is our Patreon. Yep. Uh, we, you know, if you can, if you donate to a Patreon, you get access to be able to submit brews that we talk about in our brew episodes. Uh, it helps us kind of accomplish all of this. It's the reason we're able to keep doing the podcast. Um, and uh, do sweet more things. There's yeah. a swag box. If you donate, you get a cool thing every month. Um, yeah, yeah. There's always like some really cool stuff going out. Um, and I think that pretty much covers all of the things that uh, that we are supposed yeah. to mention at the top of the episode. So let's make an effort to cover all the modern stuff today. There was three oh, grand prix. Three grand prix. All with right. Some sweet, sweet, sweet decks. Three modern GPs. Three different winners. Uh, we got Burger one with Infect. Uh, yep. Uh, we Sounds got right. uh, Albertus one with uh, Jess or uh, Grixis Delver or Grixis, Grixis Delver. Was it Gre- was it Delver or was it Control? Delver. There's there's four Delvers in the deck. Okay, I got think it, got that's it. the key to making a deck Delver versus not Delver. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't um, sure. Yeah. 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 That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nia Byrne winning the American GP. Yeah. When that was Brandon Burton who won that one. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Um. So yeah, that's 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 three very aggressive decks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the difference between the the like normally a top eight and the way modern has looked in the past. Uh, and then nine through sixty four is that like nine through sixty four and a lot of these GPs were incredibly diverse. Oh, like, insanely diverse. And some decks really even, cool decks. Like, heard about? Yeah, no, this, this is really cool. Um, it sort of seems like that that feeling that we all had that was like, is would would modern still be a highly competitive and awesome format if they took it away as a pro tour format? And it kind of feels like maybe that's been happening now. Maybe people are sort of a little more willing to like try stuff out because it's not a grand or because we it don't, is. We don't have a hand leading us into what it should look like. Yeah. I mean, you have Moto. Part of this, I think, is, you know, there's a big argument right now is it, it, whether or not A, Splinter Twin was a good thing for the format and B, how good of, how diverse modern is right now. And, you know, the the proponents of it say, and that's kind of what we're saying is, look at how diverse all these different decks are. You know, there's a Pyromancer Ascension deck that's not Storm. There's, uh, in fact, there's Affinity, there's Burn, there's, you know, Grixis Control. Like, there's a bunch of decks out there but what kind of the detractors say is pretty much all the decks I just listed off, and and I didn't list off all the decks, but a lot of them are very aggressive. And the format right now is very much about getting your opponent dead before they do, regardless of what each of you are doing. I mean, I think, that, so the argument that it's not diverse because of that, I think it's, it's forgetting something that's very, very important. So... Um, the fastest format that is commonly played is Legacy, right? I mean, Vintage is vintage is faster, but... The words commonly played are key. Yeah, but, I mean, Vintage is way less played than Legacy. Yeah, um, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and Modern is a step slower. So I think if you start to get into slower formats like, like Standard, um, then you don't have to think about decks as much as 
are there interactive or are there non-interactive decks? When you have three to four turns to set up or you're dead, it's incredibly difficult for the whole format to be interactive. I mean, you can have decks to, like sort of mid-range, toolboxy, I answer everything type of decks. Those will those will always will exist and always will be interactive. And they've been power. I mean, like that's what collected company decks, also known as X birthing pod decks, and possibly yeah. known soon to be Eldritch Evolution decks, have always been. Which is toolbox decks that have an answer to everything, but also have their own powerful game plan. Right now, if if you start to look at the rest of the f- sort of format and, and what you would call non-interactive, something like Infect or these aggressive decks that just try to kill you before you can answer anything, when the power level and the redundancy of the cards in the format are such that you can win between three and four turns most games, like I mean, it's turn four, but you're setting up for the kill by the fourth turn, you just can't. The format can't be completely interactive if that's the case. It's impossible for it to be because the, the, every, the people would react. That's the point of a metagame. Sometimes it'll be more interactive than other times, but I think this is when you have this kind of diversity, it really does mean you have health in the format. You can't look for interaction as what makes a format healthy. I, think, I, th- I do also think there's two issues here. One is somewhat of this GP is an, a reaction to um, kind of what Dredge has done to this format. And when I say that, I mean... Previous to this, the side, the fifteen sideboard slots, you know, you designated some towards affinity, some towards infect, and then you kind of had a, a slew of other things that you kind of used to kind of control what you needed to be be ready for. But like affinity, dredge interacts on such a different level that you have to have this very specific type of hate for it that it makes it so you sacrifice hate for other decks, which causes a little bit the situation where there's you know of the What's eight times that? Thirty-two. What you're decks, top eights? or twenty-four out of the twenty-four yeah. decks in the top uh, in the that top eighted this weekend? Yep. Most of them were heavily linear aggressive decks. Yep. Now there was Jund, and like that's kind of the other side of things is Jund is the most consistently best deck in modern in its history. Yep. Period. Well, like, that and Splinter Twin. But I wouldn't. I mean, and Jund Jund has survived its banning. <laughs> Splinter Twin yeah. hasn't. True. Um, and if you take the unbannings from both, I think Jund is still a more dominant format De- yeah sure player format defining deck. um and jund is a interactive deck people yeah. like people always want more interaction and like part of it is that it some of the interaction comes off of discard so it's a little preemptive yeah which people seem to dislike which is fair because yep. you never get the cast your spell though i personally think a, getting my spell countered feels way worse than getting my spell discarded yep um those are interactive decks and and three jund decks were in these top 24 yeah i mean there was a bunch of jund there was a bunch of affinity um, which There's is pretty one blue white control, two Jund, uh, two Hate Bears, a few Eldrazi, Burn through the Breach. I mean, Coral Home Combo. Like, there's th- that's the other thing is decks like Coral Combo are being considered combo decks when really they're mid range decks yeah. that just have a combo built into them. Right. So you have these situations where you have a lot of these decks who play fair magic, but then have their kind of their pivot point where they can now move away from that. And that's kind of what Splinter Twin was. If you look at what, I mean, all this is is just a collected company deck. I mean, not that it's playing collected company or not, but more like it plays a bunch of just dirtily two and three drop creatures that are aggressive and can attack for the red. Right. But that can sometimes just win. And that's what Affinity was. It's just instead of doing the dirtily creature mid-range plan, it was doing the tempo plan. I mean, and then you and then you also have the decks, this sort of these sort of mid-range decks, these uh, like the red green through the breach ones that play. Um, you know, they play one Emrakul, and they play the Primeval Titan package, and they also play um, Through the Breach. So it's it's sort of trying to scape shift you out mixed with uh, your classic Through the Breach sort of Emrakul plan. I mean, I don't think of that entirely as just combo. I mean, it plays, it plays what, three Lightning Bolt, two Anger of the Gods, main deck. Um, I guess that is fairly glass cannon but... But I mean, six months ago, people complained because Zoo wasn't a viable deck. Like you kind of, and that's the other thing that I think is unfair is that they're smushing decks into a kind of a black and white area where there's decks that are either hyper aggressive and they're going to kill you, right? Or there's decks that are controlly. But in reality, there's ramp, combo, tempo, uh, control, mid range. Um, like you know, decks like Hate Bears are aggressive decks, but in reality, they're temp, you know mid range decks. Yeah, so like where they're playing just creature after creature, trying to value you out until you lose. Their creatures just prevent you from doing stuff. Well, I mean, I think that's the difference between being proactive and reactive, right? So Hate Bears is a, is a proactively uh, interactive deck. 
same right. same with like discard spells out of Jund versus a control deck that is mostly reactive with counter spells and spot removal. I mean, they're and, still. And I guess my point is that Jund, even though the discard is proactive, yeah, uh, I think it follows definitively in the later category. Definitely, even though like yes, they're discarding stuff, but that discard stuff is really just them reacting to what you're doing. Burn like, if is... you're playing a deck of all, if you're playing a zoo. Thoughtseize is really bad against you. I mean, okay, Burn is a non-interactive deck. Uh, Affinity is a non-interactive deck. Grishel, Grishel Horde. Grishel, Grishel Brand. Grishel Brand. Um, that is a non-interactive deck. Yeah. Some of these decks, it's true. But I, I don't think that if you had none of the none of those decks, people would be as happy with the format. The fact that there is balance... Um, I don't know. Let's should we talk a little bit about some of these decks? Sure. Um, do you want to do you want to go through each top eight and talk about what that top eight was doing? Sure. All right. So let's start with Grand Prix Grand Zal. Grand Zal. Um, sh- I hope I said that right. This is the yeah. Okay. Uh, first one by I'm here. not going to say anyone's names because that would just be doing a disservice to them. Uh, the first deck is the Thing in the Ice Pyromancer's Ascension deck. This deck is sweet. This is the deck by Ryocha Tamada. Yes. Yeah. You I don't, don't know, know Ryocha Tamada's name? No, no, I, I, <laughs> no one wants me to read people's names. Fair it's, enough. It's going to win with no one winning. <laughs> so this deck is super sweet. Super sweet. Yeah. The only win condition is looping burn off of Pyromancer's Ascension and then the card Thing in the Ice. Yeah. Four copies of Thing in the Ice. So many cheap spells. And it plays four Visions of Beyond. Oh, my four God. Four Gitaxian Probe, four Serum Visions, three Faithless Looting, four Inst... Visions of Beyond, which is, for people who don't know, the one blue that can be draw three cards if you have more than 20 cards in a library. Do you know how many times I've tried to make this card work? An outrageous... Well, someone did. Yeah, an so outrageous welcome, number. Welcome to, to the new world. When I used to play aggressive milieu with uh, Glimpse the Unthinkable and Mind Funeral decks, I always wanted to play with four Visions of Beyond. I feel like this was just someone making a Jess guy... Ascendancy deck, and then realizing that just like, oh wait, Pyromancer Ascension and Thing of the Ice is just gonna be better than Just Guy Ascendancy in this kind of deck, and then being correct and top eighting <laughs> GP. Um, I mean, they I don't even play other threats in the sideboard. Like this is a deck that I I would assume played like even just one man land in the sideboard would sound like something that I would like think about doing, but nothing. No, this deck is just all in. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is weird, right? If you think about okay, what what do you need to beat this deck? So abrupt decay. Well, you uh, yeah, you said abrupt decay is a good one. Um, <laughs> you need you card. so you need to have creature removal that's not lightning bolt to kill thing in the ice, and you need to have a way to get rid of a graveyard or a way to get rid of a permanent. Um, and so you have to have access to both of those in the main deck. Well, you said three things, but I think if you just have the one card, abrupt decay, abrupt decay, <laughs> it kind of does a lot of what you need to do there. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's true. I, I'm just thinking like abrupt decay is is heavily played. What's I mean, graveyard hate in this deck definitely hurts. Well, that's, I mean, that's one of the complaints people have about Modern is it's a little bit of did you dodge your bad matchup? If this deck goes into a tournament that's as diverse as this is, its chances of dodging Jund the, ent- the entire weekend is not impossible. Like, that's a completely likely situation. Can Soul Sisters lose to this deck? <laughs> is it possible? Mm-hmm. No, right? Oh! Uh- I think the ice is really good against Soul Sisters. I mean, it just bounces a bunch of one drops, and, and then, then you they, gain all that life. <laughs> and then back. you play it on your next turn. Yeah, and it's like gain a life, gain two life, no. gain three life. I don't think Soul Sisters can lose this, but that's like yeah, it's another deck that if I dodge Soul Sisters and Jund and I'll, or Junk, I basically am yeah. fine for the weekend. Totally. And my guess is that this deck it does okay against like eventually you have you have eight threats that Jun, you know Jund needs to draw eight ways to kill them. Right. So like. And this deck will draw them. It's all cantrips otherwise. Every other piece of the deck will find the card you need. Yeah. I've been playing a Jeskai Delver deck recently, and like... Did you, uh, did you end up putting Delvers in? No, no, no. There's no Delvers in it. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bell, Bell, I did put a... Uh, what's it called? A Johnny Benjamin. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> uh, Death Shadow Zoo. So Lim-Zong. this is kind of becoming... Limzong Yi. This is kind of becoming a format-defining deck. Yeah, it's, it if plays, I were to make a gauntlet, I would put Death Shadow Zoo top, top, yeah, top of the list. To big make time. Sure it's in it's that super list. explosive. Um, in all the right ways for for my money, I like I like what this deck does. Um, it's very clever. And this is a deck that I definitely think is benefited by Splinter Twin being banned. Like this deck would be awful against Splinter Twin. Yeah, this deck's all in. I mean, it's 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 similar. It's doing similar things to what an Infect deck is doing. Sure. Um, it's not that different. Um, it doesn't play protection spells like Infect plays protection spells, um, which and Infect doesn't play a lot of them. But it well, plays I think a few. It, it, this deck gets blown out less than Infect does. Yeah, because you're you're 
the spells you're the bunch of spells you're casting to get to make a threat exist isn't on the threat. It's to get to the threat and to yeah. make your life total low enough that your threats are good. And you um, get to play like Nakadal and like Step Links and Swift Spear. Just, like, all your creatures are just beefy. You're just you're just aggressive. I mean, it's Teamer Battle Rage is the most important card in the deck. Teamer Battle Rage and Become Immense. I mean, I guess Death Shadow is the most important card, but Teamer Battle I, Rage. I would, is, I would say Become Immense is the best card in the deck. Why would they play three and versus four then? Because it's it's. I think Battle Rage. Well, they have they have a ton of cantrips, but also because it's just it's a it's a seven drop stuff. I mean, like I think this deck doesn't exist without one. I think it exists. I think exist without, without Become Immense, this deck still exists with Battle Rage because think about what Battle Rage does. You're you're trying to make one creature really big. That's the the ultimate plan of the deck is you're trying to make you're trying to make that death I guess shadow. My point is, if I was to pick a card in this deck to ban. Yeah, or that I would put on a list of cards that could be banned in the next five years. Yep. Become immense is on that list. Definitely, team or battle rage is not. But I'm saying become immense is better in in fact because think about it. You're attacking with your seven seven death shadow, right? Sure, but both of those decks are now top tier decks, and they're like, I uh, mean, in fact, has been forever. But and they're like, I block with my whatever. I block with my tarmogoyf, and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna cast this team or battle rage, and now not only is my guy uh, plus no, it's it's double strike and trample, right? Yeah, so not only is my guy now double strike, but he's also trample. So you blocking doesn't do anything. I'm still going to get through for eight damage or whatever, or sure. nine damage. Uh, whereas like you're like, I'll just become uh, immense, I'll, my I'll, guy. I'll Nothing say happens. that those are the two best cards in the deck. I just think that this is the team, or this is the definitive team or battle rage deck. It also sure. plays Mishra's Bobble, which is becoming a uh, what is a thirty dollar uncommon now. Yeah, I'm so glad I bought like. Four and three dollars. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Oh man, I don't even think I have them anymore. I, I remember buying them. four because I wanted to do the like the Patrick Chapin teamer deck with uh, yeah. What's his face? The red guy. The yeah that never really panned out. The but card's sweet. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, every time we talk about one of these decks, I'm gonna like bring up a deck I built at some point, and then we're gonna talk about it for half a sentence, and then move on. Every time we talk about one of these decks, I'm gonna bring up Grand Architect. Just kidding. Okay. Burn. All right. This is your job. Cho- your, your job is to save the person who piloted oh, it. Oh, all right. Uh, Gia How. Na- Gia How. Yeah. All right. Nah, I burn. This um, is what won GPLA. And not this not this player, but this list. Um, I think this one is a little bit. No, I think they're the same. I think I don't think there's that big. It's pr- this is pretty classic. I mean, this is there's almost nothing in here that is unexpected, even to the yeah, the mana base sideboard. Yeah, this is pretty much a by the numbers burn deck. It's yeah. it's a good it's a really good deck. I mean, again, Eidolon of the Great Revel I think is maybe the most important card in the deck. Though some people would tell you guide. Um, it's just a lot of burn. Really good cards. So next is uh, Goryo's Vengeance. So this is not uh, Grishol brand. Yeah. Um, and it, because the different there's no Shul. There's no none of the green cards. This is purely just based off of getting your Grizzle brand and or your Emrakul into play quickly. Normally the the the, the kind of the conceit is. Grishel brand is Jund colored, and these are uh, Grixis. Yep. Um, interesting. This one's not playing Jace, uh, which I've seen in the past, but it is playing Is It Charm, which probably functions in a very similar way. Uh, it does play. Sh- this is one of the ones you know plays through the breach. Through the breach is becoming kind of another format defining card. Yeah. Between this and the red green through the breach decks, like these are two different deck staples. Like I, of the top eight. There were three through the breach decks, red green ones, and this. It's it, through the breach exists in a really really interesting place because it allows you to play this game where, if you worry about through the breach when you're playing the through the breach deck, and you're like, all I have to do is counter through the breach and they can't win, they'll still usually beat you because all they have to do is get to turn six to cast primeval titan usually. In the red green um, ones. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Which like is not even turn six, it's turn you know because they ramp these cards out yeah but i'm so i'm saying like i i think that that's like a mistake that like a newer player makes is they look at that and they're just like that's the card to f- focus on the way to beat these decks is to try to go faster and disrupt them disrupt one thing if you can counter or get rid of the through the breach when they cast it and be a turn away from killing them you're in business if not you're hosed but isn't that kind of the complaint of the format right now is that there's no way to consistently be a deck that tries and stops people Maybe I just okay. Oh, you know what's interesting about this list actually that we didn't mention? It's a card that has now shown up a few different places this weekend, and that's Collective Brutality. Collective Brutality has two copies in this list, and Collective Brutality is sweet. Um, we were talking about on our episode, on the spoiler episode, which of the Escalate cards we thought was going to be the card, right? And uh, this is the black one that reads: one black, one colorless sorcery. Escalate, discard a card. Choose one or more. Uh, 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 target uh, uh, opponent uh, yeah. reveals his or her hand. You choose an instant or sorcery card from her. That player discards that card. Mode two is target creature gets minus two, minus two to the end of turn. Mode three is target opponent loses two and you gain two. Um, 
I saw PV play this in his uh, Abzan deck that he didn't top eight with, but I think he got like sixteenth or something. Okay. Um, I like he played one copy, but I like this card. The, I I am uh, have always been a fan of modal cards like this, and I think you'll see. I think you're going to see this one, and maybe we've done entire episodes on the power of versatility. I think you may even see some more of these cards start to show up in sure. in more modern decks. But this this I think is the most powerful of them. So yeah, the 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 red one is also really powerful, but it's it's three mana yeah like being two mana is such an important piece in modern i mean we've talked about that before shall we talk about this retreat to coral humdop kelvin shoes bant nightfall yes um this deck's sweet right yeah i mean this is kind of what i was mentioning in the beginning though this is basically just another i mean it is it's a it's bant collected company it just has three additional retreat to core helms in the deck that allows it to play a game of oh you were able to stop me from killing you regularly i just won sorry Right, so for those of you that don't know how this works, Retreat to Coral Helm is a one blue, two colorless enchantment with landfall. And it has it's, it's just like all of the retreats. It has two modes. So either you may tap or untap target creature or scry one. And the ability that's important here is the tap or untap target creature. Because what this, what this allows you to do is tap your Knight of the Reliquary, sacrificing a land, right? That then you search into play another land, which triggers this and untaps Knight of the Reliquary. Normally a fetch land, so you're... In reality, a getting a refine with Knight of the Reliquary and normally making a mana or using another ability again, like it, it yeah. yeah. So with Knight, you can essentially loop and go huge. You can get make your guy enormous and end it with a Keswick Wolf Run and win the game. Um, I don't know that it happens in like one swoop all that often, but it gets pretty massive, um, and that is kind of the combo. But it's obviously not entirely reliant on that. Knight's just a good card in yeah. general. Beyond that, this. This deck is playing four Spell Queller yeah. and two of the Selfless Spirit, the, the yeah. Sacrifice making it destructible. This deck is really sweet. I mean, I'm, I'm, people were talking about this deck being a thing a year ago when uh, Retreat the Gorhelm kind of came out. And yep. I think that these additional pieces have finally kind of made it able to get there. But this is a deck that didn't exist a year ago. These are all new cards. I yeah. mean, like, it's interesting how often a new set actually affects modern. Well, it's not all new cards. <laughs> It plays. I mean, the no, only, no, no, no. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but new, relatively new. There, um, there are a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen cards in this deck that came out since um, Cons Block. Yeah, I mean, Spell Queller is definitely the most exciting card in here as far as like new cards go. Yeah. and then Selfless Spirit, which I think we've all been on the train. I know that was on a t my top ten. Sure. Um, so shall we continue to move down? Jund. But what's interesting about this Jund is this is Grim oh, Flare Actually, Jund. wait. Something to point out quickly before we move okay. on. As well as, it is, is it Staticaster as a three of in the sideboard of this deck? Sick. It's playing two copies of Blessed Alliance, which is the white Escalade card. Oh, the other card. Escalade card. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. These maybe are going to make more of an impact than we thought. Yep. Um, uh, all right, Jund. The big thing here is Grim Flare, which I hate. Well, I know you just hate that card because you don't know why it's mythic. It doesn't deserve but it. That's, it's really good. It's like it's a great but card. That's such a weird, like such such a weird design snob thing for you to have. Like, well, okay, here's the deal. If they had given it any flavor to make this feel more epic than just get dude, yeah, like because this guy's just a dude. Like, if make him like a cool trope, like a Grim Reaper, or I don't know anything that yeah. like makes it so it kind of feels relevant instead, and like. He doesn't need to be human warrior either. Like those are two tropes that don't need a better creature. So like I feel like I guess a human for standard is something that's relevant. Would you rather he was human executioner? Yeah. Except that his warrior, but warrior was important in the last block. So I think I'm okay if that this isn't a tool for warrior decks. Yeah. Since those are black white and this is green black. I just I mean that's when it was relevant. Yeah, yeah. I get why they may have done it, but make him. Cooler. I mean, this guy plays well with Chief of the Edge and the other one, the the other uncommon. Like, sure. If you wanted to just build that standard deck, okay, we're not talking about standard here. <laughs> is that even still in standard? How does standard work now with the, the rotation? Oh yeah, Cons Block's not in standard anyways. What what did, what did I forget? Wait, it's dragon. It's dragons to shadow. There's three blocks in standard. Dragons, Ooh, right, dragons, right, right. Magic Origins. Yeah. So we're in that we're Battle in the middle of that guard. weird rotation with standard now. It's about to rotate. It's I find First it. Time. I have to be honest with you. I I, I maybe it's because I don't play any standard is why I find it confusing. But I have a hard time tracking which cards came from what set and like it, it was easy when uh, it was like okay, a block because okay. it was like that came out in be, that block. It'll be much easier moving on. So this will be the last time it's confusing. It's confusing because of dragons of Tarkir. Got it. Because it's really hard to tell what's in. I like. I don't know the difference between most commons and uncommons between Fate Reforged and Dragons of Tarkir. Yeah. But once Dragons of Tarkir rotates out, it'll be Battle for Zendikar, Shadow of Zendikar, Innistrad, and Kaladesh. Right. And those will be the three. And like, and then when the next block comes out, 
uh, Battle for Zendikar will rotate out. It'll be a lot easier to kind of keep my your mind around it Got when it. they're no longer in the awkward transition period that we're in right now. Got it. Um, beyond my problems with this card being mythic and not cool, because I think it's fine to print powerful, this is meant to be a powerhouse in standard and other formats cards at mythic. Like right. That makes sense to me. But if you're going to do it, the flavor side of it needs to be bumped up a little bit. Right. Um, like if the, the Death Myth Raptor, another one that was like mythic that didn't feel mythic but was mythic because it's just going to be a standard player house and they yeah. wanted to raise the value yep. of packs, make it an actual dinosaur instead of a lizard beast. <laughs> I but like lizard beasts. Dinosaurs are way better. <laughs> Why aren't they a thing? All right, moving on. Grim Flare in Jund. This is a thing. Everyone, this is a thing that you should be prepared for. It is a standard part of Jun now. Get ready for it. Um, I pre-ordered mine at ten each. Or I bought ten, one of four of them at ten each on Friday because I was just like, "Which one? You're going to need them if you're going to play Jun. This card can't be ten dollars for much longer." Uh, Grim Flare. It oh, might, sorry. It might not even be ten dollars anymore. All right, next one. Burn another burn deck. Is this also just traditional burn? Uh, this one's playing Nicodles, so it's a little bit more Zooey. Got it, but it's otherwise, and it plays four Boros Charm. It's which a Zooey, it's a Zooey burn. Yeah. Mm. All right. Pretty much. Moving on. This is, the greatest this is the winner of the GP. So people, you know, and this is also a conversation we had kind of recently where we were talking about tempo. Is this an aggressive deck? Um, is it kind of is? It is. Totally yeah. is. Yeah, totally is. This, this. I mean, look, it's playing, it's playing four Delver of Secrets. It's playing three Young Pyromancer. It's playing three Tassiger, one Gurmag Angler, and four Snapcaster Mage. On top of that, it's three probe, four visions. So it's you got you know your seven cheap cantrips on top of four more thought scour to add to it. A bit of yeah, some control. I mean, this deck is efficient. It's quick. It has the power to play the long game, but it doesn't overwhelm you with the long game. It's not playing any cryptic command. It's only playing two Colagons command. For the most part, the curve is very low, um, and it it wants to play. A threat on turn one or a threat on turn two and then untap and try to protect it. If you kill it, then it's going to probably try to play that Tassiger or Angler plan and right. protect that. I do love that it's playing one Counter Squall. Yeah, I love Counter Black, Squall. Black, blue, yeah, counter uh, awesome. negate, but they lose two life. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, all right, so I, I do kind of feel bad moving forward in this adventure of going through each of these top eights because, and this is more of an apology ahead of time, there are going to be burn players that did better than the burn players that we went over already in this, but we're yeah. just going to skip over them real quick and maybe say their name because we're not. Yeah. The point of this is that we, we aren't doing like a congratulations to this person for getting first, second or third at a GP. It's we're trying to cover the decks that were top eight. So that's yeah. what we're doing. And if we cover a deck that's similar, it's not about who played it. It's just about, we've already covered which this website list. We, which website page we looked at first. Yeah. So know that though. Yeah. Okay. So next, um, anything sweet in the, in the sideboard on that? Mm, nah, nothing really. Nothing crazy. All right. Um, on to America. Oh, did we mention the name of the player with the... Del oh, yeah, Alberta Slot, he won. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get on to... So, Brandon Burton. I really wish that Wizards organized this page in order of who won, but uh, Brandon Don't Burton Don't you remember won. when this... When, like, it used to be organized so much better? They changed it a while ago. The website in general. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it was so much better before. Yep. All right, so Brandon Burton won with Burn. He <laughs> had Nicodles also, though? Yeah, so it is sort of more of a Zooey Burn. Uh, yeah. his, was, his, his was more Zooey. Uh, beyond that, everything else is pretty standard. Deflecting palms the on the board. board. You have a That's couple a of standard those. Thing, yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it's got some spell skates. Yeah, spell skate won this tournament for you. There you go. Look at that. I do think actually core firewalker is like underrated as oh, a sideboard I, you, card. You know, I love that card. Yeah, I played three copies in Burning Cocoa last yep. summer. And people should be playing more of it. Uh, next card, affinity, Mason lines or Lins. I apologize it's for a good, saying I don't your know last which, name correctly. I don't know which. Um, I guess it's, it's L I N N E is Linz because the double yeah. N's makes the E less hard. I it's a know. pretty traditional affinity list. I mean, two edge champion. It does play three Master of Ethereum. You see, it's back and forth on Affinity X if they play Master or not. Yeah, I think I think Master of Ethereum has come out as the premier answer to Stony Silence. Yep. It like it's it's better than the enchantment. Hmm. It, it's slightly weaker because their other artifact hate is good against him, but it's better. Just as a like, on turn three I play this, and then we're moving on with our lives. What you're talking? Why is it, sorry? Explain what you're saying. And the enchantment, the blue and the white, blue and colorless things of five five. It's Vencer's minus. Got it. Not Vencer. Are you talking about Tesla. S champion or Master of Ethereum? Master of Ethereum. The one that gets plus one plus one for all your artifacts. Yeah. 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 So why is he a good answer to Stony Silence? You said Ancient Grudge, or did you just say Stony Silence? And I just had a brain moment. I th 
I think I, the I Twitter will know. <laughs> I think I just had a stroke. Let's okay. keep going. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Bantel Eldrazi. This is another deck that kind of there was two of them in the top A, and then if you go through the top thirty-two, there's a bunch of Eldrazi decks. Oh wait, wait, red. wait. We missed it. We missed a single copy of Seagate Wreckage in that Affinity X sideboard. What's Seagate Wreckage? That's sweet. That's the land from from Gatewatch that taps for a waste. Oh, cool. Taps three to draw a card. I've seen this before. If you have no cards, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's still a cool thing. Yeah. Uh, all right, next. Bantel Eldrazi. This is a deck that showed up in numbers. This yeah. was and this was big. This has been big. Um, you know what makes me really happy about this deck? So for those Plank of you that are cure the wastes randomly, yeah. So those of you who are like are curious what's going on, it's uh, basically a traditional Eldrazi shell, four drowner of hope, four displacer, four mattery shaper, four smasher, four thought knot, filled out by two spell skites and four noble hierarch, four ancient stirrings to dig, four path to exile, one secure the waste, one stubborn denial. In the lands, you basically just have the you have four cavern of souls and four Eldrazi temple plus the colored stuff. Um, and then a sideboard that is not that inspired. I guess Chalice of the Void that, as a four. Ghostly Prison is sick. Yeah, Ghostly Prison. Also Challenge because you, you put them on one and your deck can just remove all the one drops. So this deck, what I love about this deck and what's so cool about this deck is that it makes me happy when I see an archetype that people thought if you banned a card would die, shift into another version of it that becomes like a fair and competitive deck. Because at the, at the end of the day, like while there was crazy... Like birthing Pod decks. Yeah. When the Collected Company decks. And Eldrazi was problematic and now it's just it's it's good it's obviously good it's i just, Lugan made fair. it like an explosive like unbeatable ridiculous thing whereas like eldrazi temple yeah it is still really good it is still a soul land that's the only soul land that exists in modern properly and uh this deck's not oppressive it's just a good deck it just plays a bunch yeah. of like good mid-range cards we will see <laughs> yeah i guess i mean i i just like that because it, it i find it cool that eldrazi temple is still a thing that people want and can actually play yep all right next one is another red green through the breach. We didn't. We oh sorry. We didn't even. This is the first we just talked about it a little bit. This deck is really cool. It's playing one Nahiri to kind of just sneak one in. It's playing one Obstinate Bailoth just to get Liliana's. It's playing two Pira, Pia and Kieran Nalars. This is this is piloted by Rob Pisano by yep. the way. Uh, four Primeval Titan, four Sacred Tribe Elder. Um, just you know, generally the best ramp in the format with a through the breach summer pack game plan. Uh, but it's also playing three Oath of Nisses. Yeah, this is the cool. Green brainstorm. <laughs> it's weird. Do you find it weird to play three Oath of Nissa instead of four? Like, no. Do you find that? I don't think that's incorrect. You're like, not trying to get delirium off of it, so it's just kind of a like. Yeah, I guess it's true. The decks that play four of these bar none are the decks that want either delirium or have Tarmogoyfs. Yeah. Um, I guess. I guess. To be totally honest, I think it's even like this could whiff more. I think the reason you do it here is because your deck isn't super heavy on creatures yeah. and planeswalkers that your chances of whiffing are already high so having it be at three instead of four is is going to be generally good yep um which i think is just generally important um are they playing any delirium cards because oath of nissa seems really good with that nope never mind all right yeah i mean this card we talked about it already it does really cool things it's basically the new valka deck but instead of playing scape shift it's doing a through the breach game plan and just playing the classic primeval titan into valka into just a domi for Six at a time. The other, the other one we were looking at that we'll, I think we'll come to on this list does play a single copy of Valakut, but um, and this one also doesn't play um, Emrakul. Four Valakuts. Or sorry, sorry, uh, Scape Shift. Scape Shift. Um, and and this one also doesn't play the single Emrakul. So it's you know it's this is a version it's of that Nahiri deck that people were talking about. Um, well, it's like instead of the the Jeskai one, which there were some in the top thirty twos, but this this is the you know red green through the breach is kind of the big deck out of yep. this weekend. Um, moving on to again, Ryan Solov and. Yeah. This is pr again. This is pretty traditional. This is still playing four battle rage, three become immense. Um, I don't see anything in here that strikes me as particularly different. Yep. Uh, Scott Lips red green through the breach. This is number the one two. I was just talking this about this has so. Emrakul. This has a random corsair for all that life gain you might need. This has three simian spirit guides. So that this is this is actually kind of what's interesting. The other deck felt more like a straight up scape shift deck that just wasn't playing scape shift anymore. This feels much more like a. This is specifically about Through the Breach. This is me trying to get Emrakul on the play, but my game plan is a ramp into a singleton scape shift sideboard. Like, basically, backup plan. Right. Did you see... Um, I, I I think it was this. I think it was Scott Lip who um, was, on the, was on the draw and... Uh, or no, I'm sorry. He was on the play, and he has Spirit Guides, and his opponent was Affinity, and played turn one um, Glimmer Void into... Uh, what's it? Springleaf Drum. Past the turn, thinking that, like... Um, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. It was so, so Lip played his land and then thinking, like, I'm not vulnerable to Ancient Grudge yet. And Lip had a spirit guide, so he spirit guided with his single land to blow out the uh, to blow out the uh, how did this the work? land? The, the, the oh, yeah, to blow out the artifacts, so yeah, then he yeah. would lose the Glimmer Void, yeah, 
So he like stunned oh, random. Sick. Yeah, with the with the that's spirit guide. Awesome. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. sorry, I just had like a moment. But that that's what <laughs> happened. It was an awesome play. It was super cool. Yep. Um, so anyway, uh, that and he's also part of Team Ace West Bowl, which is uh, that's Andrew Brown and those guys that we are such fans of that are our friends. So congratulations to them. Yep. Um, next, Green White Hair Bears, played by Brandon Samaru. Samara? Sam- S- sorry. Samaru. Samarau. Maybe. Samarau. All right. This next suite, um, I'm interested. She wasn't. He wasn't playing any of the Thalias. The, the new, new Thalia. Thalia. There's a version. There's there's a version. But she is pl- he is playing one Gisela in the sideboard. There's a version cool. of this deck. The new one, the n- new Gisela. Not of this deck, but it's like the it's like the Eldrazi hate bears one that plays Tide Hollow Scholar and stuff. Uh, that was playing yeah. four of the new Thalia, and new it was Thalia? I think it was like a top thirty two deck. Yeah, yeah, I saw I saw that in the top thirty two. The yep, this deck is sweet. I mean, it's nothing crazy new. Um, that would be the new card I think to look out for. It is playing a sweet Gisela in the sideboard. Oh, like I would. Your sideboard is so tight in modern that I get why you wouldn't do this, but I would be really tempted to include one Bruna. That seems pretty aggressive. I know, but it's just like, come on, sometimes you'd get there. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, next in Affinity List. Once again, nothing crazy specifically exciting. Uh, this was piloted by Brandon Pascal. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he is. Oh, actually, he is playing. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Wait. Back to talking about that Affinity deck, I think. Or yeah. So, so the one cool thing that um, Brandon is playing is that he's got a uh, one bitter blossom in the sideboard. That is sweet. He's also, and this is probably pretty common in decks like this. He's playing four copies of Horizon Canopy. Somebody tweeted at us the other day and asked what the right number of Horizon Canopy was. Um, and actually, incidentally, we both responded from the MMCast account. <laughs> one Wait, of the he's ri- not playing any Horizon Canopies. He's not. This is the Brandon Semero. Br- Brandon Pascal. Oh, 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 are you talking about... Sorry, sorry, I thought right, you were still talking about... I thought you said Brandon, and you were referring to Brandon Semerow. No, 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 no. In the Hate Bears deck. Moving on. But I, I do think the correct one is four Horizon Kennedy. I think you can get away with three, but four I think is correct. What I said is two is safe, four is aggressive, three is the safe number. Yeah. Um, but that was in, that was the question was for elves. Yeah, yeah, elves that's, that's so a completely green. different... Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. In elves, you're splashing it for the card draw if yeah. you get mana flooded, versus... Which I think you can get away with three. In, in Hate Bears, where you're a green-white deck, you play four. Yeah. Um, all right. That's that's the end with the affinity deck, and the cool thing was bitter blossom. That's the end for uh, the American GP. One more GP. We're walking through everybody. All right. Starting at the top. This is going to be Thomas Hendricks Death Shadow Aggro. This is the same Death Shadow deck that we have seen now two other times. So this is something uh, is. Um, would you say Steplinks is pretty standard in these lists in these decks? Seems to be. Yep. Um, seems to be. I mean, it, I, it makes sense considering the fact that you are playing one, four, eight, twelve. You're playing twelve fetches. This is also a list like you know some of these decks. Sometimes these linear decks can have a little bit of wiggle room. Death Shadow seems like a deck that is so much based on you need these exact cards. Like because there's so many cantrips, because you need to get your life down to a specific amount. It's hard to kind of change the list as easily as it is to change something like. Uh, through the breach decks, which you, right. we saw have like huge ranges between creativity, um, and literally there, there's a, here's a third one, um, piloted by Mike Balinguez. But is Man. it Balinguez? Titan Shift. Yeah. And this is uh, this one's not playing through the breach. It's play, no, it is it's playing through the breach. You mean it's not playing Scape Shift? Sorry. It's playing four copies of. Yep, the breach. you're right. Not playing Scape Shift. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Four Oath and Nissa. Look at that. Yeah. He's do, he's doing what we thought there. Um. This is pretty similar to a lot of the other lists. Sideboard looks... See. Oh, he's playing two Sudden Shock on the sideboard. I like that. I'd actually be really interested to see how this deck would play with um, uh, one Emrakul the Aeon's Torn. Yeah. Well, that's the other... Right. The, the other version had the, the new, single copy. Well, no, no, no. That's... Sorry, not the Aeon's Turn. Uh, oh, the new Emrakul it. the Promised End. Oh, gotcha. Um, because you're playing four Oath of Nyssa, you're going to get your Delirium pretty high. Like, right now, just looking at it vaguely... Sacra Tribelder gets in your graveyard really easily. Yep. Oath of Nyssa gets in your graveyard really easily. All your sorcery spells, all your instant spells, Got and lands. then your lands that you're fetching, like that's five of the number of things you need to get in there. You're already ramping in the deck. You're going to maybe even just through the breach it, which is not going to be as good. It, it, it's something something I'd be def- interested in. Yeah, I mean, Nyssa wants to hit creature, land, or planeswalker, right? So you have how many, how many uh, targets? So you have 10, 12, plus 25 lands. So you have 37 Othonissa targets. Yeah. Seems reasonable. More, more of the point with Emrakul, like, the fact that the enchantments kill themselves. No, totally, they're, totally. They're so legendary, you delirium, so yeah. you get to that delirium point. So you're yeah. getting Emrakul down to an 8-drop. That's a pretty 
And sometimes you're just going to attack with a 13-13 trampler flyer. Like, that's yeah. not the worst thing I've ever done with Through the Breach. And Seems they fun. can't respond to it with Path because it can't be hit by instant spells. So, like, there's a lot of cool things you could definitely do there. So, um, I'd really want to see what that would look like. So, moving on, we have Andre, Andre Metzger's Bant Eldrazi. This is very similar to the other this Eldrazi. This is different, list. though. This is playing uh, some of the Eldrazi Sky Spawners. Yeah, it plays two Sky Spawners here. It plays one Spell Sky, and it plays one Birds. Um, it looks like one less Mattery Shaper. And aside from that, it looks like maybe it's trimmed otherwise. Um, I, I don't mind the difference in list here. Like This is also playing Blessed Alliance, by the way. In the sideboard? Yeah. Yep, yeah, uh, which is awesome. And I do Worship. Yeah, Worship which is, is sick. Which is sick. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Um, I, I like playing the extra mana creature here. There, there seems to be different in opinion difference in opinion on how this works. Do you want to play five? Do you want to play six? Do you want to play four? Well, these, seems- are, these are basically your Eye of Ugans. Right. They're like they're your second dual land is basically these things and you're taking that choice. Obviously, um Noble Hierarch is better. Yeah, adding the because sp- it does something, and but it's your and it's your colors. Adding the two sky spawners in place of the one mattery shaper, it's just one more three drop. I, I can see that you would want to have one more birds. One that- I, and, and and beyond that, I've said that it's just in general sky spawners a very important card because of its relationship to affinity and infect. Yeah. The fact that you can block that flyer is so important. True. That it definitely makes it worth kind of the extra mana needs. Um, all right. Moving down, another affinity list pilot, piloted by Manuel Menges. Yep, Menges. That's not even that hard of a name. You just... I also took my contacts out. <laughs> Stop judging me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much like what we've seen. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything in here that really jumps out at me as... Not Super one exciting card. Different. <laughs> um, G- this is a hard one because I don't know how to pronounce that, Jerry. That Jerry. Is it Jerry? Abraz. Abraz. Uh, Jund. This is also pretty stuck. There's not, none of the new Grim Flayer lists. You have two Kalidas, um, which is a more recent ad. Kalidas, but Kalidas has basically become standard. Uh, I, I definitely think this is pretty stock. This is very close. What is interesting, though, is it's playing one Kozilek Return of the Cyborg, hmm. um, which is definitely a staple. Oh, and one Tylus Tracker. Both really sweet plays. I like Tyler's Tracker yeah, a lot. Yeah, me too. Two copies of Tyler's Tracker. Yeah. Wow, sick. Um, but none of the... Uh, none Languish. Of, yeah, this none is of, really cool. None of the collective brutality. Um, then you have Messiac Burgers in Feck. I think it's Messiac or something like that. I'm not quite sure how to say that name. He um, won. This is the, the winner of the tournament. Yeah, this is the Infect list that won. Um, one Dryad Arbor. Um, what else? Infect, Infect is the prime example of a deck, by the way, that I was mentioning with Death's Out of Zoo, where it's hard to kind of have different lists. Yeah. In fact, like, every card literally has to be what it is. <laughs> it's this such a balancing act between, like, pump spells that optimize how much pump you have yeah. and creatures that optimize the fact that if you don't have a creature, this deck just literally does nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely a few things. Like, for instance, playing two Twisted Image in the main deck is a metagame call. That's that's How many spell skites are in the world, yeah. Yeah, and that's smart. I mean, and I, cantrips are the one thing I'd say you could play around in that kind of situation. I agree. Because you, that draws you into one of the other cards. Yep. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. Uh, Next is... Seraphin Wellingers. That's a great name. Green White Hate Bears. This is, I think, is this the one that was playing the other one? No. No, this is this just is still this is another, another traditional one. Green White Hate Bears yeah. deck. But I'm glad Hate Bears is doing so well. I mean, that's kind of the point is that there's such a breadth of ways to attack the format. Hate Bears, yes, is an aggressive deck. This deck is attacking your opponent, but it's doing it in a, like, a pretty fair way. Like This is a fair deck at its most basic. Hate Bears is a deck, honestly, that I think if I had a new player in Modern and they were like, I don't want to play a burn deck. What should I do? I'd put hate bears in their hands because I'd be like, this deck will teach you. It will teach you to understand modern. It will teach you to understand curve. And it's not that difficult to play. Right. The main lesson you just kind of have to teach them is how does Aether Vile work and how does Lean and Arbiter work? Right. Arbiter and also, um, oh, is it not playing? Is it not playing the bird? Hmm. Look at that. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. And how to use your ghost quarters properly and path properly with Arbiter and all that stuff. Right. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think I have, I've always been a fan of Hate Bears decks. I think they're cool. They're efficient. They're interactive. They do a lot of the things. This they, one's also playing Selfless Spirits on the side along with Gaddick Teague, which I think Gaddick Teague is really good right now because blue red decks aren't as much the combo deck. So you don't have to worry as much about the snap bolt game plan. Yeah. But decks like that, all the decks with Through the Breach and all the Goryo's Vengeance decks, this, you know, this is definitely a helpful piece in your toolbox to kind of fight those situations. Yeah. Um, uh, and then moving favorite. on, you have Daniel Balliston's White Blue Control. Oh, everything about this. I saw the stack and I was like, I'm just going to introduce it colonnade. and it's shut got up and let, and let talk. It's got Kitchen Finks. Or sorry. Yeah, it's got Kitchen Finks. It's got Vendillion Click, Resto Angels, Wall of Omens. This is definitely has the cool Resto Angel game plan of just like every one of your cards basically draws you two cards when you play it. Um, 
It is the only ancestral visions deck I think we've seen in the entire yeah world. Isn't that crazy, and yeah. and and also that like out of twenty out of twenty four top eight decks, there's not a single sort of the meat combo deck. Yeah, none. How did that happen? Where that just was not it just made no significant impact on modern. Just wasn't a thing just that like was it power? Is it not power enough for the format? That's crazy. I think we haven't seen the last of it. I don't think. I don't think. I think eventually there will be some decks that play that correctly. But it's 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 fascinating how unaffect it, like it, it how, makes me. It, how long did it take for Grave Troll to be good? How long did it a take? Year. Yeah, and it, t- it took a lot of Shadow of Innistrad giving it tools. Yeah. in reality, like like the fact that Shadows of Innistrad gave it um, Prize of Melgrim, it gave it um, Neo Knight, which is like. The more you think about that card, the more insane that is for that deck. It does four of the things at once. It's a sack outlet for yep. bridge from below, or it sacks itself to bridge, get tokens off and bridge. It draws a card to trigger dredge, and it's a discard outlet to get your dredger into your graveyard. Right. It literally is like for one mana. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel you, man. I mean, it is it is really really powerful. No, I mean like, but this is kind of the other point. This is, I think, the deck. I think more people will slowly get online with the blue-white kind of, you know, control decks because I think they're better than they used to be because these are generally good when people are attacking because you get Wall of Omens, because you get just Snapcaster Mage with Path to Exile. Yeah. Um, you get Cryptic Commands. These, like, even this, you know, they're playing Condemns because Condemn is good right now because just getting rid of the attacking creatures is going to be a strong play. Um, yeah. Um, one Blessed Alliance in the main and one Blessed Alliance in the side. It's cool. Yeah, I like play. that. Yeah, yeah. Those are cards that if they prove to be playable, like consistently playable, it makes me very happy that there's more brew. There's brew opportunity because, I mean, okay, with the with the white one, it's just a good card that you can just play in a deck. Like, that's fine. The black one, though, is very, very cool. The discardness. Because is... discard, as a discard enabler that has a powerful upside to it, it's like that's very unique, and I, I always like sure. when things like that get introduced. It's like anytime people have ever tried to build decks with Unus Prowler, it's like, I love that card. It's not right. that good, but like, it could be good. Well, and, and this is a deck like Kitchen Finks with Supreme Verdict is like a legit game plan. Like Kitchen Finks into Supreme Verdict into Restoration Angel is just like a backbreaking play against any aggressive deck. Like how does Death Aggro Zoo fight against that? Yeah, seriously. Like th- this is like, eh, you know, it's creative thinking. It's taking what kind of has existed a while and remembering that like, oh, this is good when stuff like Splinter Twin isn't available where I have to counter, you know, my counter game is what matters here and I'm just going to lose if I tap out for a threat. This also just spanks Ryochi Tomata's deck, the the thing in the ice deck. This deck makes that deck very, very hard to win. Yeah, agreed. Mana leaks and negates, spell snares, life gain. Yeah, this seems brutal. All right, so those those are the three top eights. Yeah, we awesome. Went through them. There was some definitely some sick nine through th- nine through thirty two, nine through sixty four decks on every one of the grand prix, and yeah. I highly recommend you guys go look because if you see a deck on there that like I want to know about this deck, uh, tweet at us at the MM Cast and let us know. We we like we covered as many decks today I think as we can realistically talk about on one yeah. episode. Yeah, I mean like there are, you know you see a lot more Tron like it, when we're looking at decks that that's where. All of Dredge was. That's where Merfolk was. That's where Tron was. Like, there are these staple modern decks that didn't show up in these top eights. That's where Elves was. They're still around. They're just, you know, getting in that specific top eight slot is hard. The format is extraordinarily diverse. And when you get down to the top 32, it's kind of insane. Right. But yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I'm happy with the format. Is I, I do agree, though, that th- the format is currently so dominated by getting the red decks. Yeah. That... Decks like the blue white control deck, but decks moving more towards that controllier side of the hemisphere, uh, are something I think the format needs to move towards. And I'm really interested to see if we can get some new cards. Soul Sisters would have dominated had it come out of numbers, <laughs> right? I think. And, and you know, I was talking about this with people a week ago because Dredge had done so well for the last two weeks. Playing aggressive decks that don't use the graveyard was the right play this weekend. Like collected yeah. company decks didn't do that well because they need a graveyard. Um, and Dredge deck didn't Dredge didn't top eight. Yeah, Dredge was the big bad a week ago. It won SEG. Didn't top eight this weekend because, like Affinity, we're now in a world where did Affinity do well last week? No. Okay, so play Affinity this weekend. Did Dredge do last week? Well, yes, it did. So you should play Affinity because Affinity doesn't lose the same type of hate that Dredge does. Right. So even beyond, even more so than what we have in the world of we need interaction cards. I think we need versatile hate cards. Yep. I'd love for a split card that said uh, exile all graveyards, draw a card, or destroy all artifacts. And like so you have to choose between the two of them. 
Exile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That seems fun. I mean, this is remember remember when we had um, I think initially it was the first time we talked to Sperling on here. We had a conversation about what it would take to fix the form. And this was back when in Splinter Twin Days. And I think we were trying to come up with like, what is that car? Is it some sort of hybrid colored can trip that costs two that does, you know, X, Y, and Z thing. And it was, and it was sort of this like silly, like what it would it look like? But ultimately cards like the one you're talking about are important. They should be, they should be playable. They should have a well, cantrip. Like, I love Escalate. Be... I love them yeah. going to play with charms more often. Like those are the type of cards that the more we see them get printed, the more often we'll get cards that offer yeah. a versatility in your sideboard. Because that's, that's, you know, we had um, all those articles that, that around the same time, that's what we did it. Uh, you know, uh, Paulo Vito Dama de Rosa did an article on like, maybe we should up the sideboard count to 20 cards. And doing that in modern only makes magic harder for new players to get into. So I yeah. think that's a mistake. But I do think the way to do that is charms. You pre- or, or or versatile hate cards that give you choices. Cards that do it, yeah, definitely. I mean, those are that's an awesome kind of card. I and mean, and bring days back to the format. Yeah, there's, but I mean, there's also a significant difference when you see a sideboard card, like an interesting new sideboard card printed. There's a difference between destructive revelry and something like collective brutality. And the reason is because collective brutality is a good tool that decks have to do multiple things, whereas revelry is just a superior option that can be played in multiple colors for a burn deck to have good sideboard cards. Like it just it just makes that deck more efficient to do something it already wants to well, be doing. I mean I'm fine with both I'm fine with getting burn getting cards that make it slightly better. But my my point is a graveyard card that just gains you life. Great. Right. Like that like like the there's the green colorless gain five life unless you have uh beefy dudes and then it gains you ten life. Right. Like attach that to a remove a card in a graveyard effect like seems like a card that would never be too good in standard, but then would help give the ability for decks to kind of cover their bases on the burn and yeah. dredge matchup, or cover your bases on the affinity and dredge matchup, so that you're not spending four slots on affinity, four slots on dredge, and four slots on burn, and then you literally have three cards left for any other type of decks. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about in this, you know, on the area of, of banning, because we talked about how, you know, Splinter Twin being banned was that a good thing. And then we also talked about um, the swords being unbanned and doing nothing. Yeah. Is I'd very much like to see more cards come off the ban list. Yeah. I mean, honestly, how, how long, how many conversations did we have about Sword of the Meek and Grave Troll both being like, you can't do that. You can't do that. that about Grave Troll. Grave Troll should have been unbanned from the beginning. It's too powerful. <laughs> there are, I, I do think that there are cards that you look at and you can honestly say, that would be a mistake. Like I think that Dread Return would be a mistake. Yeah, yeah. And it, I, they're they're I, GTA, I think the idea of, Chromox mistake. And, and you know, I've heard the argument for GTA, and, and I've heard that, and I, I don't necessarily. I've been more convinced that GTA is less dangerous. But cards like like Mental Misstep should just never be off. The, it, yeah. All it does is make Magic terrible. Uh, top, I get it. Like Top would make tournament Magic impossible. Same yeah, with definitely. Making an unbanned to eggs, but like there are a chunk of cards that I also see. Like like I'm more and more available to the idea of Jace getting unbanned. Jay, like, yeah, I mean, Jay's a like, tough sell, but yeah, I, I hear he's you. 60 bucks right now, and like, yes, he would shoot up right back to 200, or not back to 200, but he'd be a $200 card, modern card yeah. overnight. But if it comes along the lines of like right before Modern Masters 3 comes out, and they like know this is going to happen and put Jason in it, I think that's an opportunity to do that. But like, Bloodbraid Elf should just be unbanned. Definitely. Like, people are talking about, oh my God, it's going to be too good with the Ancestral Visions. Card's not seeing any play. No. Not to mention, oh my God, it's going to be too good with Call Against Command. Th- all I've gone in on Twitter for the last since these, these GPs happened is like we want interactive decks, we want decks with answers, we want decks to be able to fight against these combo decks. And like, well, there's your answer. Well, people are never going to all be happy. That's very oh, clear. That's so. fair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to make everyone happy, Ben. That's what I want. And I that's feel what you, Wizards man. wants. And I think that's the end of the episode. Yeah, I think that pretty much yeah. does uh, it. So first off, we got another spoiler for the new set, which is really exciting. It's cool. Uh, it's we really can't tell cool, you anything guys. about it until we're there. But what we're doing is we get to actually spoil the card the same week that our hundredth episode will be airing. So what we're going to do is the Saturday, uh, the 10th, um, good round number for our 100th episode, we're going to count down the top 100 cards in modern ever. Of Just all time. All time. Including including ones that were previously. Yeah, they had to have been legal in modern at one point. I don't know if that's true. Well, actually, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts. Can they be banned cards? I don't think you can do that. I'm just going to say right now because I they think have the top ten list would be just cards they banned. Well, and they also have had. I think they can be cards that were previously legal. Like for instance, Deathrite Shaman had a run where it was dominant. No, because Death- I, I don't think we can include Treasure Cruise. Like that, like having Treasure Cruise on this list, like it should be just then it would just be the top ten will be the banned cards. But here, but here, but here's legal, how I think how you separate it. This is how I think you do the list. And I want. I also agree with Kessler. If you guys follow us on Twitter at the MMCast, at Ben Bateman Media and at Kess Wiley to let us know what you think. But what I would like to do. Um, 
think about it when you, when you write a list of the top 100 basketball players of all time. If a guy had one incredible MVP season and three other great seasons, but then the rest of his career was kind of a bust, um, take like Grant Hill as a good example of a guy like this, or Penny and Hardaway. Use sports metaphors and um, I stopped paying attention. <laughs> well, you know basketball. Um, imagine, did you just not even listen at all? I know what a basketball is. <laughs> the, the point is, if you talk about somebody who had a, a, a short run of dominance, but they were good for a brief time, but they were really good, they go lower on the list. They don't compete with Michael Jordan, but they still get to be on the list because they were great. Treasure we're not Cruise talking was about, good like, we're not for rating a season. It, but we're not rating it on it, power level. We, we'll talk about the sport during the episode. We'll discuss if we should, uh, on Twitter, at, let us know, should we include cards that have been banned on the list with knowing that most likely they're going to be in our top 10. <laughs> like Splinter Twin was dominant for a long time. You, How can you make a list and not include Splinter Twin? That's ridiculous. You can't do that. I think you can. I think it's a waste. Okay. But so, we should, you should on, let us know. Let us know um, if you want to see the top 10. Top 100 cards followed by the, the bottom 10 are the most banned cards. <laughs> nah. uh, so let us know. That's what we're going to be doing. Uh, it'll be a live stream on that Saturday all day. We're planning on being a long thing, so you can tune in and out throughout the day. Yep. Um, and then the idea is that ahead of time or afterwards, we'll record the little spoiler. And then on the 12th, when the episode will come out, which should be that Monday, uh, the spoiler will be added as a little bumper at the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we're doing there. It's super exciting. The card's cool. Uh, let's just say that it is a magic card. That's all we can say. Otherwise, it's, it's spoiler sweet. ninjas come after us. I'm definitely uh, a fan. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at the MMCast. I'm at Kess Wiley. I'm at Ben Bait Media. Make sure to check out our sister podcast, The Command Zone, uh, on YouTube. is probably the best place to subscribe to them because um, th- they do videos that are sick every time. Yep. Uh, we try. Uh, you can also follow us on YouTube. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. It's a uh, Top Taking TV. I think if you just search the Master Modern Podcast, you'll find us. You also find um, that on Twitter. If you go, you guys should check out dmtwclothing.com. I think there's one or two playmats left. I checked during the episode. It looked like there was still stock, so maybe we have like two left. But uh, go check it out. It's an awesome ad. It's our first product with those guys. They do lifestyle stuff. They have a lot of really cool uh, uh, lifestyle yep. folks and brands they're working with. And uh, lastly, Patreon. Check us out. Swagbox. It's awesome. Patreon.com. Slash the MMCast. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to the MMCast at rocketjump.com. See you later, alligator.